Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today I thought we'd make this fun little Happy Village Home Sweet Home card. And we're going to be using some Lawn Fawn products and our Tombow markers to do all the coloring. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the Bayou Backdrop Die Set from Lawn Fawn. And we're going to be using that frame there. We're going to be cutting that from the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. So I'm just going to tape that down with a little bit of washi tape and run that through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine. So I die cut two of those and we're going to go ahead and glue those together. We're going to be using the Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive to glue these together. And I just thought gluing two together would make this a little bit more stable, a little bit thicker. You could glue a few more together if you wanted to, but I thought two was plenty. And I'm going to take the time here just to make sure that everything's lined up perfectly. Now I'm going to use my Distress Oxide Peeled Paint. And these are the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks. And I'm going to apply that color all over this frame. Now you'll see when I get to these little vines, I'm going to carefully kind of dab it on and pull down. I just don't want to tear anything there. So once I have that on, I'm going to grab the Forest Moss Distress Oxide and I'm just going to place that kind of randomly all over this frame. Not, not everywhere, just a few different areas, just to add some like shadowing. So once that's all set, I'm going to go to the Happy Village stamp set and we're going to be stamping, uh, again these are from Lawn Fawn, that little cottage and two of the little fences and I have the coordinating dies as well and then from the Ahoy Matey set we're going to stamp the palm trees, those little waves and the little parrot as well and I have the matching dies for those. So now I also wanted to stamp the home sweet home and the little word bubble. So I'm going to grab all my images here And I'm going to be inking these up using the VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink pad. And this is a waterproof ink pad. And it's a dark, dark black, a nice jet black. And I'm going to clean that off using my stamp chamois. And then I'm going to stamp the word bubble. And you just want to make sure you line this up. Kind of determine what angle you want that little point on the bubble to be. And then go ahead and stamp that. And then I'm going to stamp, I have stamped my little fences and I'm going to go ahead and stamp the palm trees as well. And the last thing I need to stamp is the little parrot. So I'm going to go ahead and take the coordinating dies and tape those down with some washi tape. And then I'm going to use the spring sprig die set. And I'm just going to die cut several of those small flowers. And I also want to cut the water from the Bayou backdrop set. So I'm going to go ahead and run those through my Spellbinders Platinum 6 machine and I've gone ahead and die cut everything. And you can see we have several of those little flowers. So I'm going to work on the water first. I'm taking the Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers and I'm just going to apply that all over this panel. And we are going to be using three shades of blue here. So I'm going to start with that one all over and then I'm going to go to the Mermaid Lagoon and I'm just going to come in a little bit with that, maybe about three quarters of an inch or so. You can see that center area is going to be the lightest. And the last color is the salty ocean and I'm just going to apply that lightly around the edges there, maybe about a quarter of an inch or so. So you can see there that that center part is going to stay the lightest. So now I have these little waves and they are so tiny they were really hard to get my hands on. But you can just stamp a few of these and it just adds a little bit more interest to the water here. And there's two different sizes, so I'm going to do that larger one first, and then I'm going to do this smaller one here. And you can see that up close. 
So now I'm going to color in the palm trees. I'm going to be using 133, 126, 177 for my greens, and for the browns, 990, 977, and then this is my blender pen, N00. So I'm just cleaning off the blender pen first, and I'm going to apply that ink all over just to start. And then I'm going to apply that lightest green first. And without doing any blending yet, I'm going to apply the medium shade of green. And then closest to the uh, center of the tree, I'm going to apply that darkest color. And then I'm going to grab that blender pen and I'm going to pull those three colors together. So it will be the darkest at the center here. And you can always go back and uh, add more ink. There you see that I had a little too much on my pen, so I'm cleaning it off. And you'll know that your blender pen is clean once it goes clear. And again, these are the Tombow markers, so they are a water-based marker. So now I'm using that 990 and 977. And I'm just going to apply that darker shade off to the left side here. And then I'm going to pull it over. I'm just really pulling from left to right here. And then for the little coconuts, I'm going to be using 026, which is kind of a mustardy color, and 899, which is a brown. And so I'm just going to apply a little touch of the brown, again applying the two colors at the same time, and then pulling them from left to right. Now I'm going to take the bullet tip on this Tombow marker, and I want to make sure this is dry first. It felt a little bit wet to me, so I'm going to take my heat tool and I'm going to dry that. So the Tombow markers have a brush tip and a bullet tip. So now I'm using the bullet tip and I'm going to put some little dots on these coconuts. And I just want to make sure it was dry so that they wouldn't bleed into the other coloring that I had already done. So now I'm using 905 and 873, which is kind of a corally color and then an orange color. And I'm going to apply that coral color all over this little house here. And then I'm coming in with that darker orange color. And I'm just going to pull those two colors together. Just creating a little bit of shadow underneath that roof line. And then I'm going to put a little shadow under the, the windows as well. Now using 815, I'm going to be doing just the little heart on the door in a hot pink. And then I'm using 990 and 977. And I'm going to do that roof line and the door. And for the door, I decided to add a little bit more shadow down there at the bottom. For the window, I'm going to use 451, which is a really light blue color. And you do want to make sure that your blender is clean before you go to this lighter color. Now for the two little fences, I'm using N65, which is a kind of a light gray. I'm just applying one little line of it down each side of the fence here to the left side, and I'm just going to pull that in. And then the next thing I'm going to color is the little parrot. So again, I want to make sure that blender pen is clean, and I'm going to apply that blender all over first. And then I'm using O55, which is lemon yellow color. And then 133, which is a lime green.
and then 873, which is that corally color. And 126, which is a darker green, it's kind of a darker lime green. And then I'm just going to take my blender pen and blend all of those together, just kind of dabbing it on and pulling those colors in. Now for these little flowers, I'm going to go ahead and color them first. So I'm going to use that 905 and 873, which is the coral and the orange colors. And I'm just going to apply that lighter color first and then that darker color in the center. And then I'm just going to pull that out. And I'm not too worried about the centers on these because I, we are going to be adding some Nouveau drops a little bit later on. So I really just want to get a little blending on there. Now I'm going to take my Sizzix sculpting mat and my sculpting tool. And I'm just going to use that smaller round end there. And this little set comes with several different tools. And I will give you all that information below for all the products that I've used in today's video. So check below for anything that you're not sure about or you want to get more information on. And here I'm just pressing down in the center of each of those flowers and that'll give them a little bit of dimension. So now I've taken a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock and I'm cutting it at five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm using my Tim Holtz paper trimmer to do that. Now I'm taking the post-it tape, the one inch tape, and we're going to use this to mask off an area on this card. So I want to make sure it's a little bit longer than the five and a half inches. And then I'm going to determine where my sand for the beach is going to be. And I want to cut this in kind of an arch. So I want to cut along and create an arch along the top here. Now you want to keep both pieces of this uh, post-it tape. So set that other one aside, but you want to make sure you hang on to it. So I'm going to place this up on my card, maybe about an inch and a half, and just tape that down. And then I'm going to grab another piece of tape and just cover that bottom section. We're going to be doing some inking at the top here for our sky, so we want to make sure that's covered. So now I'm going to grab the carved pumpkin distress oxide, and I'm going to apply that all along this bottom section. So I'm going to go kind of a darker to a lighter shade here. So I went ahead and applied that all along the bottom here. Then I'm going to come in with the fossilized amber. I'm going to blend that into that carved pumpkin color and just kind of pull those two together a little bit. And then for my last color, I'm going to be using squeeze lemonade. And then I'm just going to take that fossilized amber uh, and blend that those colors together a little bit more. I did not apply any more ink to it. I just simply blended it. So now I'm removing that tape. And I'm going to heat set this so that my post-it tape will stick when I go to put it down. So now that's the leftover piece of post-it that we had from before. And that will line up exactly with that arch that we created. Then we're adding that extra piece of tape again just to block that off so that we can do this lower section. So we're using the gathered twigs and we're going to apply that color all across the bottom here. And I'm not being real fussy here. I want it to have kind of light and dark areas kind of as sand would have. So I'm just kind of applying that color all around the bottom here. Now you'll see when I remove my mask, I had a little bit of a line there. So I'm just going back with that applicator and I'm just going to blend those two together a little bit more. So if you're doing this, just put your post-it tape up just a little bit higher. So now you can see that I want to create that look of that water, but I want it to look like it's continuing on, that it doesn't end right there. So I'm going to take my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive and I'm going to glue this down. But I am going to glue it so that it comes off the paper a little bit here. And I'm going to put the frame down just to check to see that 
it does give the illusion as though it's moving or continuing on. So I'm going to slide that down a little bit more, and there you can see that I get more of that effect. So once that's dry, I'm just going to turn that over, and I'm going to be cutting off that excess. So now for the frame, I want to apply some foam mounting tape. I'm going to pop this up, and I'm just going to take this tape and cut it into smaller sections. And then I'm going to apply that just around the four sides here. I didn't put any on the little vines, but you certainly could if you wanted to. But I thought with the double thickness of the frame that it would be fine. So I'm removing the backing from that tape, and I'm going to position this on my panel here. So now I've got all my little pieces that I want to start assembling. And I want the house to have the fence. I wanted the fences to kind of look like they were behind the house. So I'm going to glue those down first. And then I'm going to pop up that house. I'm going to use a little bit of that foam mounting tape and give that a little bit of dimension. Now for the palm trees, I just want them to be underneath those vines there. So I'm going to glue down a couple of them and then I'm going to pop up that one that's the closest to us. Now I want to just position that home sweet home so you can see there that you want to make sure when you stamp your sentiment that that little pointy end of the uh, word bubble is pointing in the direction that you want it to be. And then I'm going to attach the little parrot with a little bit of foam mounting tape here. And then using my Marvy Jewel Picker, I'm going to use that to pick up these little flowers. It's going to make this a lot easier. So I'm going to apply a little dab of that glue right on my Ranger Craft mat. And I'm just going to dip it in there in the glue and just apply these flowers. And it's really easy to apply glue this way. It makes it much quicker. Then I'm just using my Tim Holtz Pick Tool just to make sure those are pressed down nicely. And now I'm taking my Jelly Roll pen in the white. I'm going to apply a little bit of white along the tops of that water there. Now I'm using my Nuvo Crystal Glaze. And this is a crystal clear glaze. It's going to dry clear and with a glossy finish. And I'm going to put that on these windows. And then I'm also going to put it on the little coconuts. And you do want to be careful here because you are working with a water-based ink with the Tombow markers, so you just want to kind of dab it on. And now I'm going to grab the Jelly Roll black gel pen and just put that little dot for his eye back in. I just thought it got a little bit muted out. Now with the Nouveau Crystal Drops in the glossy white, I'm going to apply that to the center of each of these flowers. And now I'm going to take my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen in the Crystal Clear, and I'm going to apply that color just to that little heart 
on the door and then I'm going to make sure that I clean it off because I don't want to transfer that pink color over here and then I'm going to apply it to my little word bubble here and also to my little parrot but be careful when you're going around the eye since we did add that gel pen we, I don't want it to bleed there so just carefully go around that now I'm going to grab the little birds from my Happy Village stamp set I thought they would give a little bit more uh, depth to the scene here. So I'm just going to stamp those again with that Nocturne ink in the background. And now you can see our completed card. And you can see as those Nouveau uh, drops dried a little bit, they did pick up a little bit of the color from underneath. So I also want to mention that I had attached that panel to an A2 size card. So the card measures four and a quarter by five and a half. So I'm going to be using this as a housewarming card, but if you change the sentiment, you could certainly use it for anything. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.